cheat software is the basic financial tool in the electronic office. It saves you time because it automates computations. Lotus 123 is the standard for spreadsheet software, and it's the most impressive business tool today. Our goal is to give you a working knowledge of 123, so you can use spreadsheets in everyday applications. We've condensed half your software manual into this tape, and after viewing it, your manual will be much easier to follow. The material is divided into three major segments. The first segment has an overview of 123 and shows how to prepare the software. The second segment tells how to build simple spreadsheets. You'll see the basic workflow, filing and printing, business graphics, and editing. The demonstrations for that segment feature construction of a budget spreadsheet. The final segment covers the building of complex spreadsheets, including complex formulas and documentation. The demonstrations for that segment show construction of a tax estimator spreadsheet. The subjects of databases, macros, final quality graphics, and the command language will be covered in our advanced tape on 123. We don't cover every nut and bolt. Instead, we will present the features that you need to be productive quickly. Our computer system is a PC compatible with dual floppy disk drives, a hard disk drive, and a printer. Its operating system is MS-DOS. We assume you know how to use DOS. If not, there's also a training video covering DOS available from Silicon Mountain. My job is explaining the concepts and features of 123. And my job is demonstrating the commands and procedures. I suggest you first view this tape in its entirety, then review each subject and try the demonstrations. Together, Libby and I will provide you computer literacy in an easy to learn way. We have a lot to cover, Pam, so let's get started. We begin with a short digest of what 123 does for you. Lotus 123 has three separate processors. First, it has an electronic spreadsheet for so-called number crunching applications. The spreadsheet stores the data and formulas needed for an application and automatically computes the result. 123 also has a business graphics processor for making pie charts, bar charts, and the like. Thirdly, it has a database for making and using lists such as address books and financial journals. These processors dramatically improve making and using spreadsheets for number-oriented applications. It's time to learn basic spreadsheet concepts. 123 arranges its memory like a columnar pad. Rows are labeled with numbers and columns with letters. The intersection of a row and column is called a cell. The cell address is simply the column letter plus the row number. A spreadsheet can have 8,192 rows and 256 columns. The monitor acts like a window and shows only a portion of the spreadsheet. Most of the action occurs in cells because they hold numbers, labels, or formulas. The value of a cell is the number or label that's displayed on the monitor. Sometimes the value is computed by a formula. For example, this formula sums the contents of cells B4 and B5. Suppose you change the number in cell B4. Asterisk 1, 2, 3 will automatically recompute the formula and display the sum. Recomputation is a valuable feature. With it, you can play what if by pressing only a few keys. Some formulas use built-in functions. These are predefined computations. A good example is the summation of these numbers. The longhand formula would look like this. Instead, we can use the function sum in the formula. Clearly, it's a shorter method. 123 offers a wide range of built-in functions used for engineering, finance, and statistical analysis. Directions are given to 123 by typing commands on the keyboard. Commands are chosen from menus shown in the control panel. Two types of output are provided by the software. A report is simply a printout of the spreadsheet. Of more interest is a business graphic such as this bar chart. That wraps up the overview. Next, we'll tell you how to prepare the software. The two major items of preparation are installing and starting the software. 
Before installing 123, make sure you have the correct hardware and software. Your software manual should list these. The software is shipped on several disks. These include the 123 system disk and its backup, the install library disk, the utility disk, and the print graph disk. The software configuration will depend on what kind of disk your system has. For a hard disk system, the C drive holds the programs and data files, while the A drive will be used to start up the program. For dual floppy disk systems, the A drive is used for the 123 system disk, and the B drive is used for data disks. Installation has two steps. Copy certain floppy disks and files and install the driver sets. For hard disk systems, use these procedures. Start your computer and get the C prompt. The hard disk should already be formatted. Make a subdirectory with the name 123. Then change to that subdirectory. Insert the 123 system disk into drive A. Type copy, a space, A colon, asterisk dot, asterisk, another space, forward slash V, and press enter. This copies the system disk into the subdirectory. Also, copy the install library disk, the utility disk, and the print graph disk. Now we need to install the driver sets. These are files which control hardware operations. Type install, press enter, and wait for the instruction screen. Press enter again to get the main menu. Follow the step-by-step -step instructions to tell install what hardware you have. Libby will show us a few of the steps. Select first time installation by pressing enter. After reading the instructions, press enter. The next menu tells install if there's a hard disk. We do, so I'll press enter. Again, read the instructions and press enter. Use the down arrow to select the no option and press enter. This omits copy protection from the hard disk. Continue responding to install until it saves or replies on disk. Then exit the program. If you have a dual floppy system, use these procedures to install 123. Back up the install library disk, the utility disk, and the print graph disk. With the DOS disk in drive A, insert the 123 system disk into drive B. Copy command.com from drive A to drive B and verify. Swap the disk in drive B with the backup system disk and repeat the copy command. Do the same for the print graph disk. If your MS-DOS version is 3.2 or later, copy command com only to the print graph disk. Now for the driver sets. Replace the disk in drive A with the utility disk. Type install, press enter, and wait for the instruction screen. Then follow the first time installation instructions as we did previously. It's time to start the software. If you have a hard disk system, use this startup procedure. Insert the 123 system disk in drive A. 
Make sure you're in a 123 subdirectory. Type 123 and press enter. Shortly, a logo appears followed by a blank spreadsheet. Remove the system disk and you're ready to work. For a dual floppy disk system, use these startup procedures. Make sure you have the A prompt. Insert the 123 system disk in drive A. Type 123 and press enter. The logo appears followed by a blank spreadsheet. Insert a data disk in drive B and you're ready to work. Let's get better acquainted with the 123 screen display. The three lines at the top of the monitor are called the control panel. Row numbers and column letters are displayed in the highlighted border. Below the border is the spreadsheet proper. The bright rectangle is called the cell pointer. It shows the current cell. The upper right corner has the mode indicator. Ready means 123 is ready for a command or data to be entered. The lower left corner is the message area. It shows the date and time and also shows error messages. We have a couple of other things to do at this time. The default printer setting should be checked. Use the worksheet global default status command. Press the forward slash key to get the main command menu. Then type W, G, D, and S. Only the first letter of each word in the command is needed. The current printer settings are displayed. 123 assumes your printer is connected to the first parallel port. The default page is 66 lines long with top and bottom margins of two lines each. It also has left and right margins at columns 4 and 76. The printer name chosen with install should be displayed. Also, check the default directory name used for filing operations. For a hard disk system, it should be C colon backslash one, two, three. Press enter to clear the display and press Q to exit the menu. For dual floppy disk systems, the default directory has to be entered. Use the worksheet global default directory command. Type slash W, D, D, and D. Press escape to erase the A drive name and type D colon backslash. Then press enter and Q. The new default has to be saved to disk with the worksheet global default update command. Type slash W G D U. Wait a couple seconds. Then type Q. Every time you start 123, the new setting will be in effect. If you make a mistake on a command, there's an escape mechanism to correct it. Suppose you type the wrong letter in a command. Press the escape key repeatedly until the command menus disappear and retype the command. Also, if the mode indicator flashes an error when you're typing, Read the explanation in the message area and press escape to clear the error. At this point, we'll stop to preview the next segment about simple spreadsheets. There's a definite method for building a spreadsheet. Libby and I will show you that method. Next, you'll learn about filing operations and about printing reports. The following subject shows how to make business graphics. The sixth subject explains how to edit spreadsheets. Our demonstration spreadsheet is a simple budget. It uses only one screen. It also computes the budget surplus with a simple formula. Let's begin our study of simple spreadsheets.
simplest spreadsheet should be built with a step-by-step -step method. It keeps your work organized and flowing smoothly. Here's a brief digest of the steps in the spreadsheet workflow. Start by sketching out a model on paper. Then set up the spreadsheet on the computer. Continue by entering data and formulas. Next, format and protect cells. Be sure to save the spreadsheet on disk. And finally, print it. Our paper sketch is done, and we're ready for the details of using this workflow. Set up the global items first. A global item affects the overall format and content of the spreadsheet. For example, the column widths can be changed to accept large numbers. The default global settings are displayed with the worksheet status command. That's invoked by typing a forward slash W and S. Press enter to clear the display. Libby will change the column width to 12 characters with the worksheet global column width command. Type a forward slash W, G, and C. Just type 12 and press enter. Instantly, all the columns are resized to the new width. To finish the spreadsheet setup, format specific columns. For example, the budget model has long labels in column A, so it should be widened to 16 characters. The command to use is worksheet column set width. The cell pointer must be in the column to be widened. Type a slash, W, C, and S. Type 16 and press enter. Note how the column width is adjusted. That concludes spreadsheet setup. The next step is entry of data and formulas. Do the labels first. They're used for row and column headings. With the arrow keys, move the pointer to cell B1 and type the label Monthly Budget in all caps. As you type, the entry appears in the edit line of the control panel. When done, press Enter and the label appears in the cell. Line 1 of the control panel shows the complete label. The apostrophe is a label prefix and is supplied by the 123. I'll move the pointer to cell A3 and type another label. The down arrow key causes the label to appear in the cell and moves the pointer down one cell. To save time, we'll skip watching Libby enter all the labels in column A. Now for something that's both clever and efficient. In cell B6, type a backslash, a dash, and enter. Immediately, the entire cell is filled with dashes. Cell B16 gets the same entry. The backslash is called the repeat label prefix because it repeats any character which follows it. Let's move on to entering the budget number. It's just as easy as entering labels. With the pointer on cell B4, I'll type the number 2000 without a dollar sign, comma, or decimal point. When enter is pressed, the number appears in the cell in the same format. This is called general format. In a few minutes, it will be changed to the currency format. While Libby continues, I've got a couple of notes on entering numbers. Numeric values must start with one of these characters. Only one decimal point is permitted in a number. 
Formulas are usually entered after the labels and numbers. It's a simple procedure as shown in this demo. The total income formula will go in cell B7. Type a leading plus sign to show the start of a formula. Then type the cell address B4, another plus sign, address B5, and press enter. That's it. The value is calculated and displayed. The formula must start with one of these formula indicator characters. Of course, addition is not the only operation used with this formula. The other mathematical operations of subtraction, multiplication, etc. can be used. For a complete list, consult your manual. The paper model indicates the second formula should use the sum function. Here's how a built-in function is constructed. The function starts with an at sign. The function name follows immediately. Inputs to the function are called arguments, and they're enclosed in parentheses. The sum function has one argument, and that's the range of cell to add up. Note the range format. Cell addresses are separated by one or two periods. To enter this function, move the pointer to cell B17. Type the function and press enter. So far, we've entered cell addresses by typing out the complete address. An easier way is the pointer method. The cell address is taken from the location of the pointer. A good example for showing this is the third formula. The formula goes in cell B19. Type a plus sign. Now move the pointer to the total income cell B7. The cell address automatically appears in the formula. Type a minus sign. The pointer returns to the cell being defined. To continue, Move the pointer to the total expenses cell, B17, and press enter. Again, the address appears in the formula automatically, and the value is calculated and displayed. As a rule of thumb, use the pointer method for cells close to other cells being defined, and use typing for cells that are distant. It's time to move on to the next step in the workflow. The data and formulas must be formatted and protected. You may have noticed that 123 accepts data in only one way, which is called the general format. Hence the need to display cells in many other formats. The range format command does this for specific cells. I'll show you how to change the general format to the currency format. Type a slash R, F, and C to call up the range format currency command. The currency format defaults to two decimal places. Accept this by pressing enter. Then type the range of cells to be formatted. In this case, it's cells B4 through B19. Press enter. And instantly the numbers are formatted with dollar signs, commas, and decimal points. I've got some extra notes on formatting. Negative currency values are shown in parentheses. Numbers can only be right justified. If the formatted value is too large for a cell, a string of asterisks is shown. The default format for labels is left justified, as shown by the apostrophe. Other label formats are possible, including center and right justified. To get them, type one of these label prefix characters at the start of the label. We're almost done building the spreadsheet. The next step is to apply protection. You can shield the cells from accidental changes or deletions. This protection is usually applied to labels and formulas only. The procedure is to first apply protection to the entire spreadsheet and then remove it from cells with numbers. The command Worksheet Global Protection Enable protects the entire spreadsheet. Type slash W, G, P, and E. The command to remove protection is range unprotect. Type slash R and U. 
followed by the cell range B4 to B5, and press enter. In effect, a hole has been cut into the protective shield over those cells. Two additional commands are useful for applying and removing protection. Use the range protect command to protect specific cells. Use worksheet global protection disable to remove protection from all cells. The control panel shows the protection status of a cell in line one. Our budget spreadsheet is constructed and almost ready for use. We've seen a lot of information, so a brief recap is in order. There's a definite workflow for building spreadsheets. Sketch the model on paper, set up the spreadsheet on the computer, enter data and formulas, format and protect cells, then save it and print it. The last two steps are shown in the next subject. cover the commands used to file and print a spreadsheet. 123 uses certain predefined file types. These types are shown by the file extension. Spreadsheet files have an extension of WK1 and so on. Of course, a 123 file name must follow DOS rules. Eight characters for the name plus a three character extension. The two basic filing operations are saving and retrieving. A file save command stores the current spreadsheet on a disk. Simply type slash F and S, and a file name prompt appears. If you have a hard drive, the default path name is already supplied. The first time you save a spreadsheet, type only the file name and press enter. The extension is supplied automatically. The spreadsheet will be saved into the file. Veteran users save their work every 15 minutes or so in case of a power failure. To save the same spreadsheet again, type slash F and S. The file name you last used appears. Press Enter then type R to replace the file. The file retrieve command calls up the spreadsheet from the disk. To demonstrate a retrieve, Libby will erase the current spreadsheet. The keys are slash W, E, and Y. To retrieve a file, type slash F and R, and a prompt appears. Then press Enter. The spreadsheet is read from disk into memory and displayed on the monitor. At some point, all that data must be printed out. In 123, a printout of a spreadsheet is called a report. Draft quality reports can be printed quickly and easily, as you'll see now. When the printer is turned on, 123 assumes the print head is at the top of the page. With the printer power off, manually advance the paper so the print head is at the perforation. Turn on the printer and put it online. Libby will use print printer command on the budget spreadsheet. Type slash and two P's to select the main print menu. Then an R to select the range option. We want to print the active area of the spreadsheet. To specify this range quickly, type home, a period, the end key, home again, and press enter. Now type an A to get the align option. Press G for go, and press Q to quit the print menu. The report starts printing. When the printing is done, 123 doesn't advance the paper to the top of the next page. Use the print printer page command to advance the paper. Type slash and three P's 
and the paper advances. If you need enhancements, such as header for advances. If you need enhancements, such as headers and footers, 123 has other commands to make them. It's time to review the major points about filing and printing.